my family and I just got back from Las Vegas where we spent Thanksgiving together so I am unpacking all my clothes the day after because I cannot have it in my room any longer. It just stresses me out. So I had to put all my clothes away, put things in the laundry and now it is officially December and I woke up very late today and I feel a little bit unproductive because I wanted to do a weekly vlog every single week leading up to Christmas starting December 1st. So there's not much going on in this day. This is mostly a catch-up day before my classes tomorrow. So the only exciting thing that we're doing today is decorating our Christmas tree, but then afterwards I have to do my notes for my class and do an assignment as well. But hopefully you get to see the little things that I do throughout the weeks leading up to Christmas. But let's just get on with my Monday. I'm going to go downstairs and hopefully decorate my Christmas tree. I can't get day twos out, so we're just gonna leave it there. Wait, wait, here we go, guys, here we go. If I push the plastic out, ah, yes, it's a squirrel, you can't really see it. Anyway. So I have a new plant and it is a cheese plant. I have been looking for this plant for like months because it's so rare to find because so many people want them and it's pretty popular. And I finally found one and she is thriving. She grew two new leaves and she is growing another one and I am just so proud of her. I don't know what I'm doing to make her happy but I'm glad she's happy. So that is a plant update because I had to tell you about her because I'm just so proud of her and she is just living her best life. She is thriving for the both of us. So now I am going to work on an assignment for my class. It's a makeup assignment because we all did really bad on our first assignment, so she's giving us a second assignment to hopefully boost our grade. And I'm terrified that that won't work and I'll get a bad grade in this class and that's just like making my thoughts spiral and I'm just worrying but I'm trying not to let it get to me. I'm trying to just work on the assignment, finish it, and just hand it in and if it boosts my grade good, if it doesn't, she won't count it, so. So I'm almost done with part one of my writing assignment and I'll be honest, I don't even know if I'm doing this correctly because I've never done this type of an assignment before and the professor did not explain it that well. So I'm just kind of just chucking along, hoping for the best, hoping that my brain is doing the right thing because if not, I will cry. Once I finish part one of the assignment, there are only two parts, I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee and take a break because this is like making my brain feel like mush. And in case you are wondering, 
I am back in college at another university getting my paralegal certificate and that's as much as I'm going to talk about it because while I'm always in an educational setting and academia has just like gripped me by the throat and won't let go, I don't like talking about it. I don't like talking about my studies. I'm just... I don't like doing it, but I'm just letting you know about my assignment because I need to run to someone because I am currently just alone suffering. So currently I only have part one of my assignment finished, which is fine because I have a whole week to finish it. So I'm probably going to finish part two tomorrow and now I'm going to pick up my mom. We're going to drop off books at my library, which were due yesterday, but it was a snow day yesterday. So I don't know if the books are considered late. Hopefully they aren't, but it doesn't matter if they're late because the fee is not that big. And then I'm going to my friend Sarah's house before my class. It is a night class. So hopefully it'll be let out a little bit earlier this week. That way I can edit a vlog that I'm going to be posting before this one. That is my current plan for the rest of the day. My hair is like a mess. It's just not cooperating with me today and I just feel like a 12 year old boy with my hair like this in this particular style with the headband. But it's fine. We're not going to talk about it. Hello. Hi. I look tired. But I am back from class and things went well. I showed my professor my assignment to see if I was on the right track. And she said I was and I am just so happy because now I can work on the other half tomorrow. But now that I am home, I'm going to eat a late dinner and then edit a vlog upstairs. So a couple people have asked me on Instagram about my hair routine, which changes a lot, frankly. I change it like every three months because my hair adapts to what I put into it. So then I have to change my routine because it starts to fight against the products that I put into my hair and since I cut it short now it is a much different routine than when it was long but I'm just gonna show you the routine that I have currently because right now it's working for my hair and I'm just gonna roll with it so for my shower routine I use head and shoulders and a mix of apple cider vinegar and head and shoulders in a very tiny hotel airport like travel size bottle and I mix that together because apple cider vinegar is really good for balancing out your hair, especially if you have a dry scalp like I do. I'm a mixture between dry scalp and an oily scalp. I just like can't win with my scalp. So apple cider vinegar I've been using for years and years. Every time I shampoo my hair and it is wonderful. It softens my hair, it balances out my scalp, and I cannot recommend it enough. So after I shampoo my hair, I use the OGX Charcoal Detox Conditioner. I started using this because my hair got oily randomly in the summertime so I had to find a conditioner that specifically detoxifies my scalp and gets rid of all the impurities and this works really well I've tried so many different oily hair shampoos and conditioners and OGX's charcoal detox shampoo and conditioner have worked the best for me but since my hair has gotten a little bit less oily I've gone back to head and shoulders. I feel like only two people are gonna care about this because who cares about your hair routine? I don't know, people wanna know about it. So after I shampoo and condition my hair and my hair is somewhat damp, so then I get my John Frieda Frizzies Curl Reviver Mousse. I have been using this for the past two weeks or so. I've always had this in my bathroom, but sometimes it works for my hair, sometimes it doesn't. Currently, it does work for my hair, so I shake it and I only put like the quarter size in my hand because my hair is so short and then I just kind of put it through my hair. My hair is like really low maintenance now that it's short which I love and I appreciate so much. I used to be able to put gel in my hair when my hair was curly but since it's much more looser now, gel is too heavy for my hair. So I put that in my hair and I usually clip it up to let it dry. But on day two when my hair is a little bit flatter, I revive my hair by wetting it and then I put in Redken's Curvaceous Ringlet 
curl memory complex my hairdresser put this in my hair after she cut my hair to this length and I really enjoyed it and it held my hair nicely without making my hair oily which I need so I put this in on day two and my hair came out beautifully yesterday with this in my day two hair cannot recommend it enough and that is my hair routine currently for my short dry scalp slash oily scalp with like loose waves because my curls just like absolutely went away that I used to have so many curls and they just went away randomly for anyone who cared about my hair routine now you know my hair routine I also want to tell you about my current reads I am reading two books digitally this week I've been reading one on audiobook for a long time because it's a 16 hour audiobook and it is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is a book I've been wanting to read for months now. It is about a I think 90 year old woman who is recounting her life in the 40s when she moved to New York when her parents shipped her to her aunt's house. Her aunt owns a theater company and she begins to work for the theater company and she just gets into a bunch of shenanigans and she's getting into scandals and those Scandals have rocked her world and she's dealing with the turmoil of that while also being a sexually liberated and very independent woman in the 40s and it reminds me a lot of Evelyn Hugo but it's much more different because it doesn't deal with Hollywood and it also has just very different aspects but it has that Evelyn Hugo vibe where it's a woman recounting her life back then and she's talking about the scandals that she got in the secrets that she has and just being a very independent woman in a time where being an independent woman was frowned upon. So I am 55% through that and then I am also reading The Only Woman in the Room by Marie Benedict and it is a historical fiction, fictionalized story of Hedy Lamarr's life. Hedy Lamarr is a woman in history that I look up to so much. She was an actress, an inventor, an innovator and she created the basis for Bluetooth, for cell phones, for like so many different things that we take for granted and she was never given the opportunity to be recognized for her work because nobody gave her the recognition that she deserved and it, this is a fictionalized story of her life and I'm very excited to see how they're going to portray her life in a story and I'm excited to see the different aspects of her story within this book because I have seen her documentary Bombshell which is on Netflix about three times now and I know her story back words and forwards so I'm very interested to see how they're going to translate her story into a historical fiction. I absolutely love historical fictions. I just love learning about a different piece of history and different people and I also just love seeing fictionalized stories set in a piece of history. But right now I have to work on that second assignment I told you about yesterday. Hopefully I can finish that but first we have to make coffee because we have to be on brand here. So I finished the second part of my assignment and I just decided to save it and close it and look at it tomorrow because I feel like I need a fresh pair of eyes in order to edit it and just finalize everything that I wrote because I've been staring at that page for like two hours now and I feel like if I tried to edit it now, I wouldn't notice as many mistakes as I would tomorrow when I have a fresh pair of eyes. Now I am going to try and write my first movie review. I want to delve into reviewing movies as much as I review books as well because I am both passionate about movies as much as I am about books. So I want to start practicing with my movie reviews. So I'm going to review Knives Out over on my website. And then later tonight, my mom and I are actually going to see A Beautiful Day in a Nature neighborhood which is the Mr. Rogers movie starring Tom Hanks and I am so excited because I love Mr. Rogers. I can like write an essay about how much Mr. Rogers means to me but I feel like everyone can if you grew up watching him or if you just watch him currently today. I feel like no matter the age Mr. Rogers has something important to tell you and I just can't wait to cry while watching that movie because I know it's going to make me so emotional. There is nothing more satisfying than crossing something off your to-do list. I fell asleep at 6 a.m. It's either because 
I wasn't wearing my retainer and I have TMJ so like my jaw hurts if I don't wear my retainer at night, fun facts. Or I had pumpkin pie for dinner and I've gotten to the age where like I can't have sugar past 7 otherwise it will keep me up at night. No matter what, I have not slept so I got up very late today. I got up at noon because I needed to like get some rest because I have my night class today and I can't fall asleep in my night class. My hair looks ridiculous. I look like Steve Harrington today. But we're gonna pick ourselves up by the bootstraps and do our best. And that's all we can do in the end. I liked him in some ways. I liked him because he wasn't like anybody from the previous year. I haven't done any updates so far for today, but I did finish City of Girls on audiobook. I originally started it physically, but I was in a book slump, so I wanted to listen to it on audiobook, and it was such an enjoyable book to listen to. City of Girls, by the end of the book, made me feel like I knew the main character like an old friend, because the entire story, she's relaying her entire life to a person in the book, and you get to learn about the ups and downs of her life, you get to learn about her mistakes, the scandals that she gets in, her regrets, her grief, every single aspect of her life you get to learn about and it teaches you so many different lessons. It teaches you about finding family, it teaches you about growing from your scandals and your mistakes, it teaches you about finding something you're passionate about. And I had such a fun time with it. It was such a wonderful historical fiction that took you through the decades of Vivian's life and it was just so well done. At first I thought it was a little bit too long-winded because it is almost 500 pages long and I feel like a historical fiction never needs to be 500 pages long but it was just so well done and I just feel so close to the main character by the end of it and I really really enjoyed it. So if you're a fan of Evelyn Hugo or if you're a fan of historical fiction, I would highly recommend this book. It was so well written and the narrator for the audiobook is fantastic as well. I feel like her voice really embodied Vivian's character and felt like an old friend and it was such an enjoyable read and I really enjoyed it. So I finished this book within this week. And now we get to do the most satisfying thing of all, which is put this book on the rightful place in my bookshelf. And the top shelf is my historical fiction, but it's bleeding into this shelf, so I'm going to have to scoot over all these books and find a little home for City of Girls. It's nearly 11 p.m. and I just finally finished editing my recent reads which was 41 minutes of raw footage and I got it down to 20. So kudos to me for doing that. It was a time. I really have to learn how to not chat as much in those videos because 
editing that down is so time consuming so if you haven't seen my recent reads please watch it it's where i review all the books that i read in 2019 it's a series i do on my channel and i talk about 10 books per video also look how cute my christmas tree is in the background She's so pretty. I love her. Hello everyone! I'm finally wearing makeup. You were probably like, does she ever wear makeup? Yeah, I wear makeup only when I like really have to, which is like filming and going to a special place. I miss wearing red lipstick so much because for a while, whenever I would wear red lipstick, I would think I look like Miranda Sings, but I'm just like, I just have to let go of that insecurity that like her character instilled in me and just wear red lipstick and go on with my life. So my family and I are going upstate to a Christmassy type of festival because I really wanted to do more Christmas activities. So we're going to go up there probably gonna film on my phone because my camera is too big to actually bring with me it's too heavy it's too clunky so we're going to a christmas festival i have no idea what it's gonna look like and i'm just excited either way so that's why i wore red and wore red lipstick and yes it, it's gonna be a great time So we are back from the holiday Christmas festival that we went to and it was so freaking cute. There were so many different stores and just different knickknacks that you could get and hot chocolate and I got soup and the best purchase that I got was this mousse and it is the cutest mousse I have ever freaking seen. There were so many different knickknacks that they had that there was like handmade and I was looking at another mousse that could sit up on itself but I saw this one and I knew I had to take it home and I named it Buddy after Elf which is one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time and it just it just looks like a buddy it just looks <laughs> so adorable and it makes me so happy the moment I bought this I was just filled with euphoria because I don't understand why, but it, it fills me with happiness and it just makes me want to smile. I, I love Buddy so much. And now it's going to sit near my tree and be adorable for the rest of its life and I cannot wait to just stare at it every single day. It makes me so happy. So I think I'm going to end the vlog off here. There might be like more clips of me watching a movie or me reading but this is going to be like the last time I speak to the vlog because I want to take off my makeup, I want to get cozy, and I also want to potentially start editing this on Sunday. I hope you enjoyed seeing this week in the first week of December for me. I hope you enjoyed watching all the things I got up to. I didn't get up to a lot of things, but I did go to a Christmas festival and it was so nice and festive and cute and I'm so happy with Buddy. 
I'm so glad he's in my life now. And if you want to follow me on Instagram to see my daily life, you can see my daily life in my stories and my posts. Follow me there. Be sure to check out my website where I do movie reviews and book reviews and you can see all the books that I've unhauled, which is listed on my website that you could purchase for yourself and add it to your book collection. And thank you so much for supporting my channel and thank you so much for subscribing. Be sure to do that if you have not done so already and I will see you in next week's vlog. And if there's more clips after this, just ignore this like outro. But like pay attention to the outro because I say important things. So yeah, let's just, let's just get on with it. Bye if I don't film anymore, but like if I do film more then see you later. <laughs>